When Colonel was a boy, he didn't play with toys. The friends he had were mascots on the TV. So in his golden years, the idea reappears. Start a place to eat, wholesome and for families. He hired those childhood idols, all that he could find. But are they too old and soured, grotesquely past their prime? Place to eat, a family-friendly treat, where childhood heroes serve you every day. An okay place to eat, it's okay. An okay place to eat, just okay. Find some rest and enjoy the best at an okay place to eat. We're here today with Andrew Rancho and Evan Dannemiller two independent animation writers and creators of the much-anticipated highly, <laughs> highly anticipated <laughs> digital short An okay place to eat An okay place to eat An okay place to eat The whole story takes place in a diner in Delaware We had to think of the dumpiest state ever so we went to Delaware No offense to our viewers in Delaware uh, Plenty of offense <laughs> to you guys in Delaware <laughs> I've been there before, I've been to the Dover Speedway Oh, what a tool. It's owned by this guy named the Colonel, Colonel Jeremiah Jessup. And he had a really, really disturbing childhood. Uh, so all his life, he's grown up with television, uh, you know, toys, and uh, his friends were basically the mascots he'd see on TV. Mm -hmm. Eventually, he uh, grows old and wants to kind of return to his childhood in a way. So he invites all those mascots from like the cereal boxes and from TV and all that stuff to work at the diner that he has. But at this point, they're all old and they're all uh, over the hill. They're out of their minds. They're crazy. And it just becomes more of a hassle than he's ever planned. It. Ah! That's it! You people are all insane! So this is more of an, a show for adults? Yes. yes. Uh, it's not for children at all. I'd say it's TVMA. Yeah, I, I think so. I think with uh, with animation, the way it's going these days, you have the opportunity, like Family Guy, King of the Hill, to make a show that appeals to adults and to use the, the craziness of animation to do some of the more uh, horrific and just foul things you could possibly think of. You know, blood flying all over the place. At one point, we have a, a guy dressed up like an, a giant ice cream cone with a big smile, like on a big plastic head, who is a pedophile underneath. Ice cream! Yay! Ice cream! Ice cream! Can I have an ice cream? One ice cream coming up. Do you want a cup? Or my cone? Uh, cone? Oh, you're goddamn right you do. Please don't let this be a dream. So, and he gets uh, he gets a, a bullet right through his skull, which splatters back onto the back wall. Ah, ah. Ah. Clearly not one for the kitties. No, 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 no. Well, we do kill pedophiles, so yes. we're, we're good guys. That's the, wow. the story in a nutshell. It sounds like a... a Great idea. Now, how, how long have you guys been working together as writers? Uh, as writers? I don't know. I mean, well, let's, let's go start. back to the old radio days. We are, Andrew and I did uh, a radio morning show at college together. So uh, we worked on writing little little uh, sketches for the radio show. and then Freestyle rap battles. Free, yeah, we're freestyle rap battles. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh. And get out of this place, you're a nerd! Now you guys have day jobs as well, right? In the animation field? Yes. What do you do? I work on a TV show called Robot Chicken and uh, Titan Maximum and Moral Oral. And uh, yeah, those three I've worked on. And I work as an effects artist. Uh, and I also do behind the scenes. And uh, I also have done voiceovers as well. Wow, multi-talented guy. Thank you. That's what all the girls say. Well, what do you have to say about that, I mean, What about what, you? Oh, me? I don't, I don't, no, I do not work in animation. I just kind of hang out around the studio. Other than that, yeah. No, this is the only show that I really do uh, animation. Uh, I got some live action stuff that I usually do. Um, so, Roger and I have teamed up on this animation show because it's something I always wanted to get into. And so, he's brought me into this whole world. So, do you guys hope to make this into a series someday? God willing? Uh, <laughs> I would love it. Um, right now, we're this is completely self-funded. I think Evan and I have yeah. gone on the pitching route so much that it's like, we just wanna 
rather than pitch our ideas out to everybody and never see them get made, uh, we just want to make something uh, that we can be proud of. Oh, I know, I know, it's just great, isn't it? Uh... Uh, even if this never gets uh, picked up as a series for a network as we pitch it, um, we just have something that we could be very happy with. And if we want to someday make another part of the episode or make uh, make something else with it. Want to, I, I, I would love to actually continue working on the show, Andrew. Um, um, that's how I feel. All right, you, you dream higher. That's uh, fine. Yeah. So, okay, I just want to put that out there now. I didn't know we communicated that earlier. Uh, but. Your action just cost you latrine duty. Congratulations, bitch. Ah, uh, suck my dick. For people that might aspire to uh, produce their own project, what advice do you guys have for them? Uh, persevere. Um, just never give up. That's all I can say. Expect um, failure. Expect uh, a lot of it. You're going to expect a lot of no's. You want a lot of people to uh, say you're not going to be able to do it. It's going to be too much. This project is awful. It's horrible. But who cares what those people say? If you like doing it, then you got to do it. That's expect everyone you've ever met and will ever know to say that you have a terrible idea, you should never do it, but you're going to do it anyway, and they'll love you afterwards. <laughs> Hopefully they love you. Thank you.